Okay, sorry about that. That was a weird place to end that video, and I'm sure the noise was very loud. Um, I got a phone call in the middle of it. So, um, so to pick back up where we were, um, so we know that if I if I grab this control, um, or if I parented this this joint underneath this this um, circle, that I could use sort of the the way parent child relationships work to drive the location of that. But I don't always want to go messing around with the hierarchy system I already have here, right? Because um, because that means I would have to insert this foot somewhere in between uh, this knee and this ankle. And if I did that, it's, it's just going to get some really weird results on on the hierarchy, and I'm just not a a fan of how that's how that works, right? Um, it's not that I'm not a fan. That's just that's going to really not get the results we need. So we're going to use a different way of controlling these objects. Okay. Um, before we do that, though, I'm going to name this stuff. So we're going to call this hip. I use an abbreviation of CTRL. I just always have. I, I learned it in a class, um, and it just stuck. And then this is going to be R foot. I'm sorry, that's left, isn't it? L foot CTRL, and this is R foot CTRL. And before I do anything else, I want to look at the values on these, and you'll see that these are all over the place, right? The location, the scale, and you may think that that, that just doesn't matter, right? I'm going to move it around anyway, and all those values are going to change. Um, but what we want to be able to do is at any point during our animation process, if we grab that control and typed in 0 and 1 on scale, we would want that to just go back to its original location, which hopefully would be here. Right? So what I want to do is I'm going to do modify freeze transformations, and now it's new location, it's new 0, 0, 0. If I moved it over here and typed in 0, is going to go back to there. Okay? So I'll do that one here again, freeze transformations, um, modify freeze transformations, and just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and delete history on those as well, sort of like when in doubt, um, edit, delete by type history. Right. And so now we have these three controls that are, are very clean controls for where we want them to be. Okay. So off to the side, let's talk about some constraints. Um, if I created a couple of polygon boxes, let's move these over here. Um, we're going to talk about how constraints work. Right. So you'll see that you know cube one, cube two. Um, they're not in any sort of hierarchy, and so if I move cube one, nothing happens to cube two, right? So what I want though is I want cube one to control cube two in various different ways. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select cube one, hold shift, select cube two, and we're going to look at our constraints. Okay, so our constraint menus has a couple of different options here. It's all these in the top. Um, actually, the ones on the bottom work as well, but we're going to look at these top three. Right? So a parent constraint is going to work just like parenting an object underneath an object works. So if I hit parent, you'll see that they're still not in a hierarchy together, but my parent cube 1 now has a new object underneath it. And, or parent cube 2, I'm sorry, uh, poly cube 2. And so if I select that cube, you'll see that now the translates and rotates are, are blue, and what's happening is those translates and rotates are being controlled by the first cube. So if I move it around, it moves that, and if I rotate it, it rotates it around it, right? It rotates it with an offset, and so this is going to work just like a parent um, a parenting an object would, right? And if I want to get rid of that, all I have to do is delete that little constraint node that is underneath there, and now that that connection is broken, right? Um, so that's how the parent constraint works. Let's try one of the other constraints. Constrain. I'm going to do point constraint. Now watch what happens when I do that. Okay, it looks like one of them disappeared, but we'll see it's actually still there. It's just now in the same location as parent cube 1. And so basically what's happening is parent cube 1 is going to completely control the position of parent cube 2. I keep saying parent, polycube. Um, so if I undo that and move it back to where it was. Right? Um, there's a way I can do that without moving this second object, though. If I, if I go to constrain point and click maintain offset, then it will offset or keep that distance between them, right? But it will still work the same way. I can move them around. The thing about that is though is if I rotate it, 
nothing happens. Okay, this one is not being controlled. The rotations are not being controlled by this first cube. Okay? So, um, I can click here and here, and we're going to do another constraint. This time we're going to do an orient constraint. And what you'll notice is that as I rotate, this is a different type of result. It's not orbiting around it, it's just rotating sort of an exact replica of what the first one is doing. Okay? So these are different ways that we can have one object control another object. Okay? So let's go back to, and look at our controls now. Okay. So the thing we're going to want to happen is we want this ring, this controller, to completely control the location and rotation of the hips, right? So I could use, if I if you hit Q, it will hide the locator so you can select stuff easier. So um, I can hold Shift and select this control. So I'm going to do use some kind of constraint. If I use the point constraint, it would work that I can move it around, but I can't really rotate it, right? We're not getting any results from the rotation. And so I'm probably not going to use that. Um, what I'm going to actually use is um, a parent constraint because I want it to work just like that. I want it to move it and I want it to be able to rotate it to get like, some angling of the hips. Right? Um, now for the feet we're going to do something different though. I don't really want to control this joint's movement because if I try to move it this leg freaks out. Right? It's because that joint is actually already being controlled by the IK. Right? Um, but what I do notice is when I move the IK up, the toe points down, which means I'm, I'm losing control of how the angle of that foot works, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, um, I'm going to select my control, hold shift, and select the IK controller, the IK handle, right? And I'm going to do just a point constraint on that. Okay, so now that means when I move this controller, it will move the location of it, but if I rotate it, nothing's happening. Right? Um, now I don't really want the rotation to affect that because, you know, like I, like I said, if I move this up and then rotated this thing here, um, it doesn't really do anything. Right? Um, what I really wanted to control the rotation of is this foot joint right here. Right? So what I'm going to do is select the joint instead of the IK controller and do another constraint. This time I'm going to do an orient constraint. Now it's going to flip it and so that means I needed to maintain that offset. Right? So if I do that again, constraint, orient, maintain offset and hit add. So now the way this foot control works is when I lift it, the foot stays in the orientation of the control and I can rotate that control to get my foot to move however I want it. Okay? Um, and so I'll quickly do that again on the other side. Um, constrain point to my IK. Constrain orient to my foot. And so now what we have is this rig that when I move these, the feet sort of stay locked in place, right? Like they're on the ground. Okay, and if we turn on our mesh, you'll see that now we have sort of a fully functional character that we can animate and move around and do whatever we want to. There's a couple of extra things I would like to add to this. Um, one is I would like the ability to be able to move the toe, right? Um, I would also like the ability to be able to point the knee. So watch this, when I pick up the foot, nothing really, I can't really do anything to make that knee point in a new direction, right? Um, but built into the IK right here is this twist option, right? And so really I just want the ability to adjust that twist option from this controller. So I'm going to select this controller and I'm going to add two new attributes. I'm going to add a toe attribute and a, a twist attribute. So I'm going to modify um, add attribute, and I'll do toe, add, and twist, and add that. Okay? And so now we have a toe attribute and a twist attribute, and even though those are on there, of course they're not going to do anything. All right. um, go ahead and add them on this side as well, just so we can have a full 
rig once we're done. Um, add attribute toe twist add. So now we get those for each of those. Now what we have to do now is connect those up and make them work. Okay, so we're going to use the connection editor for that. I'm going to go to Windows, General Editor, and then Connection Editor. And of course that's off my screen because I used to have dual monitors. Let's see, Alt, Space, M, Arrow, move that back over here. Okay. Um, so in this foot, the control I want to select first is the toe. Right? And I want that to control the toe joints rotate Z. So you see that value changing, right? So I'm going to select this toe joint and say reload right. And so now the toe is on the right, the control is on the left. Okay. So I'm going to select toe here, and then I'm going to try to find the rotates in this list. And it's actually right here, but it looks like it's grayed out. If we hit that plus, you'll see I can pick a specific channel and align it. And so now you'll see the rotate Z of my toe is yellow, and if I adjust the toe in here, it'll allow us to wiggle it. Okay. Um, let's reload this left again, or reload the right again with the IK, and this time I'm going to use the... i got to find it. It's going to be the IK handle... twist. So twist to twist. Okay. And so now the, now the twist will control the angle of the knee. Okay. So quickly to show you that again, I can reload the right uh, reload the left now for this leg and then reload the right for this toe and the toe is going to drive rotate Z on that toe. And I can select this control, or I'm sorry, yeah, the IK, reload the right on that, and the twist will drive the twist. And so now we have what should be a fully functional rig. If I move this up, I can rotate this out, give a little twist to the knee to angle it, right? I can move this around. Right, and I can get this character posed in whatever way I want to. Um, I still have some stuff with the skirt sort of hitting the legs, but I'm, I'm probably going to do that with fabric later. So um, so we have a fully functional rig. Now here's the thing you want to watch out for. Right now I can select those legs, right? And if I accidentally set keyframes on those, those joints, then I'm going to really mess up my animations. So I just want to hide these joints now. And so I've already put that in a rigging layer. I can just turn those off, and now I can animate all of this stuff here. So let's go ahead and increment and save so we have that. I can select all three of these controllers and hit S and then move it a little bit and all of these channels are updating. And so now my character is blending in between those two, right? And so this is this is what we wanted. This is the ability to start animating this character, moving around, and doing whatever we wanted to do. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. Um, the last. Uh, sorry, now I'm now I'm having fun animating. So, there we go, twist that leg on around, right, and so now she's walking around, or dancing, or I don't know what she's doing. Anyway, this is how we're going to create, this is how we can create a full rig, and now we can animate this character and have her do kind of whatever we want to. Um, anything that you want to add additionally, you can. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to uh, select the mesh of this eye, right? And I wanted that to scale um, up and down, right? I could I could maybe unlock what would that be? That'd be scale Y. I don't know. I may be able to lock that to where it would it controlled the scale Y for a blink on that, right? Um, 
And so there's a lot of different things we could do. We could you know, set the bow up to rotate, or we could even put additional bo uh, joints in here and, and have them only control the eyes so we can move them closer or further away from each other, manipulate those however we wanted to. So we can do all sorts of different controls on this. Um, this is a very basic rig, and it's extremely simple in how we've organized it here. Everything is still sort of separated out, and you would really want to encapsulate that into a final group um, before you, you, you called it finished. Um, but that's more than we really need for this project or for this, this exercise. So more than anything, this is just sort of some basic how to get um, a rig in here that will allow you to manipulate this character and walk it around. So uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.